Hey, what's up, people? Piz Al here. Today, I want to talk to you guys about 1991's Howling 6, The Freaks. It's part of the new Howling Collection DVD set from Umbrella Entertainment. And Howling 6, The Freaks focuses on a mysterious drifter with a hairy background who wanders into a dusty little town looking for work not long after he arrives in town the harker traveling freak show comes through and wherever the harker traveling freak show goes people have a tendency to disappear we soon discover that mr harker himself has a bit of a toothy background uh people die people uh disappear uh we get werewolf foo we get some vampire foo we get some werewolf versus vampire foo and it's howling six the freaks and i'll be darned if it ain't half bad now of all the latter howling sequels the freaks is easily the one that i've seen the least amount of times and i'm not sure if that's because it just didn't air as often on cable television as the other howling movies and I include Howling 7 in that mix. I've seen Howling 7 more times than I've seen Howling 6, The Freaks. But I'm curious as to why this is the movie that I've seen the least out of all of the latter Howling sequels, because Howling 6, The Freaks really ain't half bad. As a matter of fact, I had a pretty darn good time watching Howling 6, The Freaks. Um, this is also the only movie of the latter uh, Howling sequels that Clive Turner was not involved in. And I'm beginning to think that that may be the biggest reason why Howling 6 The Freaks ain't half bad. Now, first off, I dig the idea of a traveling freak show and how a traveling freak show could hide in its midst a werewolf and a vampire. I think that's a pretty cool plot device. I also have to give Howling 6 some props because we actually get to see a werewolf in Howling 6. Not just werewolf POV, not just werewolf in the shadows, not just a flash of a werewolf mask flying at the screen. We actually get to see a werewolf in this movie and a werewolf transformation and not a bad werewolf transformation considering that I'm sure the budget for this film was very, very low. Um, and that's thanks to steve johnson's effects now the werewolf isn't it isn't that kind of hound from hell looking werewolf they they kept some of the human features in the face i think to make to make the werewolf look less evil because the werewolf in the movie is actually the good guy and the vampire in the movie the vampire in the film looks really good it's very bat like it's just a a very cool looking vampire so we've got a nice looking werewolf we actually get to see a werewolf in this movie, which is, it's too bad that that alone puts a howling movie, a werewolf movie, um, above several other of the howling movies in this series because of how little we saw of a werewolf in those movies. The cast from top to bottom is pretty good. You've got some pretty recognizable faces um, in the cast. The performances are pretty good all around uh the gentleman who plays the the werewolf drifter i've seen him in several other films he delivers a fine performance the actor who played harker i've seen him in a lot of different movies he was in warlock 3 and just i believe his name is bruce Payne. maybe seen him in a ton of movies he delivers a fine performance all the performances in howling six the freaks are pretty good the other characters that make up harker's traveling freak show are kind of interesting it's a well-made movie the pacing is good i just don't have a lot of negative things to say about howling six the freaks now it's not perfect by any stretch it's not a great movie but by latter day howling sequel standards this is absolutely a standout i mean we actually get to see a werewolf in a howling movie we actually get to see a transformation in a howling movie not just werewolf in the shadows not just werewolf pov not just a flash of a werewolf an actual werewolf and by those standards alone which is sad to say <laughs> because we'd had two back-to-back -back howling movies with very little werewolf in them 
and knowing where we're going next with Howling 7, knowing that there's pretty much next to no werewolf in that movie either, Howling 6 The Freaks is definitely a standout in the latter-day Howling sequel pantheon. Now, as for this release from Umbrella Entertainment, it sports Howling 3, The Marsupials, Howling 4, The Original Nightmare, Howling 5, The Rebirth, and Howling 6, The Freaks. As for Howling 6, The Freaks, there, there are no extras. There's no additional content. It's presented in full frame, and the picture quality is okay. I'll post a link to Umbrella Entertainment's website in the description if you guys want to go over and look into picking up the Howling Collection DVD set. Uh, as for Howling 6 The Freaks, I dug it. I recommend it. If you've seen Howling 6 The Freaks, by all, mean, by all means, let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments section below. Let me know where Howling 6 The Freaks ranks among the latter-day Howling sequels in your, uh, in your opinion. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. They're also right around here. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care. And until next time, when I review Howling 7, New Moon Rising. <sighs> Peace. Join the A Buck A Month Club and help support my channel on Patreon. Thank you to my current patrons, Kevin Smythe, Orc145626, B-Movie Mike, Robert Sobel, Turi Delamore, Stephen Flanagan, Lori Holt, Mitch O'Dell, Farron Sutton, Craig Farrand, Jeremiah Lambert, Grindhouse Grotto, Joseph Charlesworth, Chris Earls, Derek Janna, Demon Waffles, Simon Clark, Stone Gasman, Zachary Barton, Mr. Bibby86, James Welch, Eli Geisler, Jeff Overing, Alan Scott, Kyle McGuire, Jay the Stingray, Lorne Dixon, Andrew McDonald, Dave Barnes, Jonathan Lundy, Chris Parsons, Chris Gonzalez, Trenton Bowser, and Jason Brattenbeck. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.